So in St. Luke chapter 9, the book of St. Luke chapter 9, around verse 51, verse 51, 51, amen. In, in, in this book, in, in chapter 9, Jesus was, was, was on this awesome mission. He had come to, to, to redeem the world. And, and when he was walking along the shores of Galilee and different places, most people at that time did not understand who he was. They didn't know that God had wrapped himself up in the flesh of men. They didn't know that it was God that was walking and talking to people. He housed himself, amen, in the flesh of a person. Can you imagine that? And he loved you and I so much so that he knew that if there was not someone to come to redeem them, all of mankind would be lost. Every one of us, amen, would be plunged into hell. So there was nobody, there was no redeemer, amen, for us. And there was a search all throughout the world, heaven and underneath earth, and there was nobody found. Then Jesus stood and said to his father, prepare me a body, and I'll go down and I'll redeem him. And God did this. I, I can imagine God said, if you go down there, they're going to lie on you. They're going to mistreat you. They're going to scandalize your name. They're going to say all those things about you. But he loved us so much so that he said, I'll die for him anyway. Because it was a joy that was set before him that he despised the shame. Come on, come on, y'all. Amen. And today, all of us are sitting here today because of the sacrifice that Jesus made. Then not only that, but they killed him. Not because of the wrong that he did. They killed him. And God raised him from the dead. Amen. In order that, that when we die, we can put our faith in somebody who know what that even feels like. Amen. Isn't that good to know that we have an high priest, we have somebody like Jesus that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. But today I want to talk about something today from this text. And if you got it, say amen. In Luke chapter 9, verse 51. Is it 51, y'all? Verse 51. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. See, in, in this chapter, Peter had confessed his faith in the Lord. And Jesus was walking with these men for almost three and a half years, having taken these men, I mean men from every background. I mean they were just some jacked up, messed up men. But when Jesus get through with you, he can make something out of you. Amen. I mean, he took, he took these men, and Peter, in this text, had already confessed Jesus as being the coming Messiah. Then from there, he took Peter, James, and John on the mount of the call Transfiguration. And those guys had been walking and sleeping with him, and, but they never knew exactly who he was. And Jesus took three men out of that 12 men that was following him and took them up on a mountain and took them up mountain. And the Bible says that he transfigured, which means the real God on the inside that they could understand were revealed to three men. There were Peter, James, and John on that mountain. And now all of a sudden, God began to bleed out of this man. He began to shine so much so that the glory that was in heaven. Can you imagine for three and a half years, for, 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 for almost 30 years, God had kept himself on the inside because if God had a bled out, he could have killed all of us because no man can see God and live. So God put himself down in the flesh of men, and for 30 years he kept it in house. Even, can you imagine, God got down in the wound of a little peasant girl, and God could have blowed her away, but God clothed himself and housed himself. Amen. And only at the mount, come on, at this mount of transfiguration, there he was with Peter, James, and John, and all of a sudden Moses shows up, and Elijah shows up. Amen. There, and these men, Moses represented, represent the law. I, Isaiah represented the prophets. Amen. And there Jesus was coming to say, I'm taking the law and the prophets. I'm coming to fulfill them. So there he was with Moses and he was there with Elijah. Are y'all hearing me? Say amen. And there the Lord of glory there. And now as he was talking to Moses and Elijah, the Bible talked about how he began to bleed out. He began to shine like no man. He was so shiny that even brighter than the sun. And Peter them seen this. 
And Peter said, can, should we make tabernacles, one for you and, and one for Elijah, Moses and Elijah? And all of a sudden when they said that, God said, no, this is an insult to me. He said, because he's higher than Moses. He's higher than Elijah. He says, no, hear ye him because he's my son. Amen. And this cloud came and the Bible says that when this cloud lifted, Jesus told them, don't be afraid. That voice is for you. Come, come over here, somebody. Isn't God good that, that he housed himself in a man? But I want to talk about something today. And it came to pass when, and when it was come, they was come, he should be received up. That means he was getting ready to cru be crucified. Steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. Notice now, and he sent messages before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. Here Jesus going to Samaritans. They were half-breeds. They had all kinds of mixture in them. They were, they were, they were anything. We used to have, we used to have a dog. We call them Sooners. If they weren't full-blooded German Shepherd, full-blooded Chihuahua, full-blooded anything, if they had all kind of stuff, we call them Sooners. They soon to be anything they wanted to be. Amen. Because <laughs> because they had all this stuff mixed up in them, so we call them Sooners. Well, that's how the Jews looked at Samaritans. They even called them dogs. Come on. They called these people, and, and Jesus was now saying to these men, I'm, I want you to go, go to Samaria because the Jews in their land, in their custom was to never get mixed up with these people who did not know their pedigree. And they said even there was a time that a Jew would even bring the dust or the dirt from their feet from over Samaria over into the land of Israel. They would get to the border some and knock the dust and the shoes off of their feet before the end. That's how much they hated these Samaritans. And yet Jesus kept putting them and taking them to Samaria. Can you imagine him taking them there and he was dealing with them, letting them know that all men are important to me. I don't care who they are. I don't care what mixture are. Every man, all men have been made of one blood and that's of God. Amen. Can, 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 we, can we say amen? But in the Bible says, but the Samaritans were in the village of Samaria to make ready for him. And they did not receive, some of the Samaritans did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. Even Samaritans did not want him to go to Jerusalem. So they were even, they would even receive him because they wanted him all to themselves. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, we don't like y'all anyhow. Jones translation. They said, <laughs> See, see, the Samaritans had an issue with the Jews, and the Jews had an issue with Samaritans. So when the Samaritans said they didn't want him to go to Jerusalem, or they didn't want to receive them, James and John said their names was, James and John was called the Sons of Thunder, which means that those boys told a knife in their pocket all the time. If they had guns back then, they'd have had those too. These guys had an awesome and a mean temper. So when the Samaritans said they will reject him, these boys said, Lord, listen, listen what James and John. And James and John saw this, and, when they, and they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? Even as, and notice they, they're going to get scripture now. They're going to pull them a scripture out. You know sometimes we want to do something to bad people and find us a scripture to do it? So, so they said, why don't you let us call down fire like Elijah called down fire on the prophets of Jezebel. Then Jesus said, no, no, but he, rebu he turned and rebuked them and said, you know not what manner of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man came not, or the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's life, but to save them. And he went to another village. Now, I don't know about you, but have you ever had to walk away from something? Come on, I, I, I want to talk about, I just want to talk about keeping, keeping it moving. Amen. Have you ever had a time where you just had to walk away? Because if you stayed here another second, you were going to act right out of care. If, if I just, if I stay here one more second, are you, I, come on, come on here, somebody. Nobody in this room, you didn't ever have to turn around and just, I, I just. Because if I don't leave right now, I'm going to do something that I'm going to regret and you're going to feel. Oh, Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Or have you, have you ever had have to drive off? You, you were in a place and you just had to drive off because if I stayed here another second, I'm going to do something that I'm going to regret. I don't have nobody in this room but me that have those problems, but you've never had to just shut your mouth. You, you had to shut your mouth when everything inside of you want to cuss up. You, you want to tell them off that even though you were a good, devout Christian, you was a Baptist, all born again, baptized, Holy Ghost baptized, but, but cussing was coming up because you wanted to tell us something, but you just had to drive off. 
Can we keep it real in the house this morning? I, maybe I'm the only one in here never had to walk off you. You said, I, I, I just need to check out. I'm going to ask the boss. I just need to take the rest of the day off because if this, if, if she keep messing with me over in my cubicle, we're going to have this place all tore up. And I don't want to lose my job because I need to work. Y'all are so holy in here. You, you, are the, you are the most cutest and it just, oh, you are so, so controlled. But I know some of y'all are lying. I, in fact, in fact, just yesterday, somebody in this room, if, if you wouldn't have, if God hadn't been, see, the Bible says the love of God constrains us. Come on, somebody. See, see, see just because I love God, the only reason I had told you something because I love God and he keep pulling me. Have God have, have God ever got in your way? You want to do something and you, you had planned it, you had slept on it, you had, you had, you had already fixed it up and, and the, but, but you kept loving God. His love kept pulling you back and God kept getting in your way. God, I'm going to tell her off. I'm going to put him in his place. I didn't want to tell him something but God kept getting in your way. Let me go on this side. Y'all too holy. Ain't nobody ever had God to just get in your way. You want to make a mess of things and God kept getting in the way of you. When, when you want to cuss her out, she didn't even come to work that day. God kept messing that stuff up for you. <laughs> Did he come to work? Notice most of us have heard the phrase, keep it moving. It means no matter what comes your way, your resolve is not to be distracted or sidetracked by things or people trying to get you to abort your purpose in life. Amen. This phrase also can mean, I don't have time to be fussing with you. I will not waste any energy trying to get you to understand. I will not spend another minute hoping you'll see, amen somebody, what I see. I'm not going to stand here waiting for you to come where I'm going. I'm coming. You can come or you don't have to. But when I get there, I'll be there when you get there. Come on, somebody. <laughs> talking about keep it moving. There's sometimes in life you just got to keep it moving. You can't let people distract you. Can, can I talk to just two people? One of the most frustrating things I've found out for, for purpose, the person that has purpose in their life is to be around a negative situation and unstable people. It's frustrating with a person that has purpose in their life. When, when you know what God has, has put in your heart to do, and you, I, you know, I, it's just frustrating when I be around some people that, that, that look like they don't want to do no better than this, and they, they don't want no better, and they're going to get all, acting all freaky with me because I want better. Oh, God. And when God has placed in a person's heart the reason for their existence, they will not be satisfied, amen, somebody, until they have accomplished what God has put in their life. They, they cannot be satisfied. And that's why, you know, it gets on your nerves because every time you turn around, they're looking for a way to better themselves. And, and, and sometimes you find somebody that's willing to better. It, it gets on your nerves. And that, well, Pastor, what's the guy? See, when Jesus was going through Samaria and, and, and it was dealing with these, he had people on both sides of the spectrum. The Samaritans were, were, were racist and the Jews were racist and they were just all messing up and but they didn't understand why he came he came to put a bridge in between that come on come on he came to show us that i don't care who you are i love everybody but, but sometimes we think god loves just us come on but if god done that would, wouldn't it be a big waste for jesus just to die for just only black men or only white men or only Indian? god came the bible said god so loved the world That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, whosoever I don't care who, who, you put your name on the line of a whosoever. Can you imagine God saved Charles Jones? Some of my friends still don't believe it. <laughs> Some of y'all don't believe it either. <laughs> but I am, I love the Lord, amen. He has changed my life. Amen, somebody. And every time I come here, you all, if y'all don't say amen, you know I say amen by myself. And praise God, if, you don't, if, if, if I said don't play music, I do my own music. I, I, you know, I'll lead a song and I'll back myself up. 
is nobody in this room as excited about being saved as I am. See, that's why I'm learning. I'm learning no matter what you do, God has made me a person of purpose. I, got, I know in whom I believe, and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed to him. So therefore, I ain't got time to be messing with you if you don't want to go nowhere because when I get there, I'll wait on you, hope you'll come, but I'm still not going to stand around and wait for you to make up your mind. I got to keep it moving. I don't know if I got anybody in this room, but this one at 8 o'clock, I had some people gave me a high five, chest bumps. I said, Pastor, if you hadn't told me that, keep it moving, I had stopped. And I was going <laughs> to, but Pastor, I'm glad you told me to keep it moving because I was going to make it move, but it's not the way you're talking about. <laughs> no, I don't mean moving it like that. I, I'm talking about sometimes you have to get out, amen, of somebody's airspace. And if you got to move, you just got to move. Amen. Because you don't want nobody to hinder what God has for you. And I want you to, I want to tell you something, girl. You better listen to me. You better, there are some people, you got to be careful about who you let speak into your life. Because everybody speaking to you does not have your best interest in mind. So you better be careful about who you, who you let you, who you talking to and, and who you be around. Because words, even some words added with faith will make you do some stuff that's outside of who God has called you to be. Can, 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 I, can, I, can I move on? Because I really want to go home because I'm hungry. I, you know, and I got a pretty girl that was at 8 o'clock. She all mine. I ask her every now and then. But when she gets so pretty like that, I say, you know, you know you mine. She said, huh? I said, you, 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 you my woman. My woman. <laughs> yeah, man. And, and, and the girl can cook. Come on, somebody. The girl can cook. Suck it, y'all. Uh, um, well, can I, can I just say, somebody say, come on back, pal. Come on, come on. Somebody say, keep it moving, keep it moving. All right, all right. I keep it moving. But both Jesus and Paul displayed an example of keeping it moving even in the face of opposition. They, they had to keep it moving. You remember Jesus one time, he, was, he had went to this place in Samaria. Again, he told the men, he said, listen, guys, he said, I must needs go through Samaria. And I can see Nathaniel and, and these guys who was prejudiced. They said, Lord, you, you, don't, you, don't, you show you want to. He said, no, uh -uh, I, I must needs go through Samaria. And there in Samaria, there was a woman that was there at the well. And she had come for the last time. And the girl knew the scripture because the well that they were on and the well that was in that place was dug by the patriarch called Jacob. And Jesus sitting on that well before he got there, he knew this woman would be there. He knew she was. And I don't know about you, but some, have you ever been a place where, where, where God met you? He met you and, 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 and this lady was, had to go get water. Most time it was uncommon for a woman to go get water at that time of the day. Normally men be at that time, but this woman, because of the reputation he had in the community, she came to get the water where nobody would be messing with her. Have you ever gone out and you said, I'm going so I won't have nobody messing with me. Some of y'all come to church and sit well on the back because you don't want nobody looking down. Come on. Come messing with you. Well, when Jesus got to the well, he got there. He, the, the Bible says his disciples had gone away. And when these guys went back, they went to Chick-fil-A to get food. I'm not, well, I'm just, I thought I'd throw that out there. But but, when, but when, when, when they got back, here come Peter, James, and John, and the men came back, and they had a bag of Chick-fil-A. And you know the flies, them, them fries they cut that got the counter? You know, them, them, um, they, they had the sauce. You, nobody ever had the sauce. And they brought this back, and, and when they got there, Jesus was, they were stunned to find that when he got back, he was talking to a woman. He was talking to a woman at midday and it was uncustomary for a rabbi or master or lord of Israel to be talking to a woman even if it was wife in public. So can you imagine Nathan you already already said that can't no good thing come out of Nazareth anyway so when he walked up and said I, I, you know what we've been following this dude but he is talking to a woman in public and we don't follow him all the way now he got us over here in Samaria. Now when we get back he's talking to a woman. And Thomas might have said, because he died a whole lot of stuff, <laughs> I told y'all, I ain't know. But when they got there, Jesus, 
in this text here. I, can can y'all just trust me on this? I didn't put this in the Bible. And it says in um, um, John chapter 4, verse 31, in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him. So when they got back, they said, saying, Master, eat. Say the Lord, would you eat? When he got back to the well, said, Master, would you eat some? And, and, but he said unto them, I have meat to eat that you know not of. Uh, Jesus, I don't, I don't see no, 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 no takeout bags. I don't see anything here. Then he said to them, and the disciples, he said, the disciples said one to another, have any man brought him aught to eat? And Jesus, knowing that they were confused because, you know, they had, I mean, they, they still had ketchup around their mouth and, and they just had the smell of Chick-fil-A on their breath. And, and, and now, and he, they know he hadn't get anything to eat because there were no stores where he was located. And, and they said, well, did anybody bring him something to eat? And, and I, surely I hope this woman gave him nothing to eat. <laughs> you know, sometimes we don't want to eat from certain people, you know what I'm saying, you know, and, saying, and, and they're thinking, Lord, anybody brought you something to eat from over Israel, some, something kosher? Because in Israel, you can't get any meat unless it's kosher. All the, all the food, I went to Israel, everything you eat of is fresh. Come on, the lamb, they kill it right there on the spot. Everything is kosher. So they saying, Jesus, you know, Samaritans, they eat, they eat bacon, smoked sausage, baloney. <laughs> now they're really having issues because now they want to know where you done got something to eat. And Jesus said this. Notice in this one verse, and Jesus said unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish the work. See, when a, pers when a person know that they know why their, their existence, you know, why God has given them purpose and why they're here, this person will not be deterred about people who are also in their circle or people that's outside their circle because they got a mission. Say, I got to do what God has called me to do. And you got to be that person because you just got to keep it moving, sister. And another thing, you know, you remember Apostle, Apostle Paul when he was, he was about to go to Jerusalem and they said, Lord, Paul, you cannot go. They're going to kill you there. And Paul said, why y'all breaking my heart? He said, not only am I ready, not only am I ready to be bound in Jerusalem, but I'm ready to die for the name of the Lord. See, and Paul said also in another place, he said, you know, listen, I have, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Come on, somebody, you, you got to be a person that you got to be determined to fulfill the purpose God put in your life. And I got some people in this room right now that you know deep down in your heart there's something that God is calling you to, but you got too many distractions around you that you can't stay focused. Maybe you got a husband that's getting on your last nerve, a wife that's, maybe you got a dog that keep running away. I don't know what your distraction is. But you got to stay focused on what God has called you to do because there are some messy people in the world. In fact, there's some messy people in, no, you ain't finna say this, Pastor, not that robe on, but there's some messy people at church. Oh, my God. He got a robe on. He said that right in church. There are some messy people in the church. And if you don't watch yourself, they'll distract you from what God has called you to do. So, you, honey, you got to keep it moving. You got to keep it moving. You can't let nothing. I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know why I'm saying all these things. But one thing I do know, that somebody in this house, you need to keep moving no matter what goes on in your life. And, and, and right now, some of you are having some challenges. You are having some trials right now. And right now, you don't know where to turn. You don't know where the answers are going to come from. You don't know, God, I don't know how long I can take this. But I want you to know that God has not allowed you to be tested above that you ate but he will make a way of escape. Come on, somebody. But he'll make, I mean, that you may be able to bear. I don't know what it is, but God is keeping you there for a reason. Some, he's knocking some stuff off. God will not put you in the fire. He ain't going to let you burn. Come on, somebody. That's one thing about somebody that know how to cook. They, want, they, they know just how hot the temperature needs to be, and they know just how to take. You know, some of you right now are in some hot situations. And right now you say, God, would you turn down the heat? God, you know, I'm going to burn up in this situation. No, he said, no, you ain't. He said, I got you. I, I got you. I know when you're done. I just need you to brown a little bit. Come on here, somebody. I need, I need you to brown just a little bit more. But God, I'm going to No, you're not going to burn up because if you be too light, if you be brown, if you be too black, you ain't, you ain't going to. I know exactly what. What you need. Yeah, yeah. And I just wish God would let me call some of the shots. I wish God would just let me tell him when I was ready for him to bless me. 
I wish God, when I prayed about stuff, I just wish he had let me have it yesterday. But you know what? If God had to give me some stuff that I prayed for, I wouldn't be in church this morning. You know you wouldn't be in church. But some things that God let us go through, it making you pray. It's keeping you praying. That's why God put messy people in your life, because they keep you praying. <laughs> Isn't that great? Some of you are so spiritual <laughs> because of some messy people in your life. Every time you wake up in the morning, there they go, snoring, <laughs> scratching different places, and ain't going to church, ain't got no God in them. And you got to get and pray for them, and you got to love them in spite. And they get up in the morning, and even somebody, you got to walk with them, and they, and they get, want to kiss you, and you kiss them. You got to keep on praying. Folks, I know. Let me tell you something. Listen, it is hard dealing with those type of situations. That's what I'm trying to get you to see, that you got to keep it moving in spite of that. You got to walk off when you don't want to walk off. Even when you want to turn around, you just got to keep it moving. Even if everything is pulling on, you got to keep it moving. Start. You got to get your eyes on the prize for the, for the high calling of God in Christ. Jesus. You know, when we used to run track, I don't know if some of you guys that ran track, Tony, you know what I'm talking about. About. We ran track in school. They would put this line out on the track. And what they do, some guys, when you're running track in high school, somebody to, they could be nasty. And you get, your, you get your hands on that line and you put your fingers on, the, on that line and getting your feet in those blocks. And while you're in that line, in that block, some of those guys will be talking about your mama. You hear me? It's some guys with like mean pit bulls, and, and they would say things about your mama. You know what? You old, you old punk, you ain't going gonna to beat me today. And here you are, but the, the coaches teach you to put your eyes on that goal line, and, all, and, and they, they teach you to focus on the goal line. And while they're talking and stuff, you're not paying any attention to what they're saying. You, you're looking straight up at that. You're, looking, you're keeping your head down. See, you're keeping your head down. somebody. Even the head down is almost like a symbol of reverence or humble yourself. You're putting your head down keeping your head down. And when you do look up, you're not looking this way or that way because your eyes are sat on the prize for the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Do I have anybody here? You, you're in this race. You're in this race right now and you're going to win it if you keep your eyes on the prize. Somebody give God a praise offering. Y'all, I'm done. Come on, Arcel. Come on, I'm done. Because right now, I, don't, I, you, I just want somebody to keep it moving. And as I sell them, come, let me tell you what, what Jesus did. Do you not know, in spite of all the things that he had to deal with, he had set his face to go to Jerusalem. And they got angry, said, why are you going there? He had to, he know, I got to die. For this reason, I came. But Lord, Peter said, Lord, that ain't going to happen to you. He said, get thee behind me. You're not speaking from God, you, that's the devil talking. He set his face. He know that if I, if I don't go to that cross, there'd be no need for somebody like Pastor Jones to be preaching. It would be futile for us to be gathering in a house of worship if he didn't die. He went to the Garden of Gethsemane, and there he was praying. Great drops of blood. He took his friends there, and and we get there, he said, would y'all just stay with me for just one hour? Just pray. I'm going to pray. And the Bible says he went a, thrown, a, a, a stone's throw away. And when he got back, the guys were sleeping. And the Bible, he come to them and, and they were sleeping. He said, Can y'all, cannot y'all stay with me just one hour while I pray? And the Bible talked about how he was sweating great drops of blood. He was in such agony because he was heading to Calvary. After they got him, they arrested him. And when he put him on that cross, one thief said, if you be God, why don't you say, get out of this cross? And if you say you who you, if you are who you say you are, why don't you get off this cross and, and save yourself and me too? But Jesus said, I got to keep this thing moving. Come on, somebody. They nailed him in his hands and they put nails in his feet. Yet and still he was as a lamb that went to the slaughter and opened out his mouth because he know I got to keep it moving. Because if I fail here, everything that God has, has created will go down. They put nails in his hands and, and nails in his feet. The blood was just flowing, but he had to keep it moving for you and me. 
and he died. He said, no man take my life. I lay it down because I got power to lay it down because I got to keep it moving. And I got power to raise it up again. And, and they put him in a tomb. He had to keep it moving. He got down in the grave. He got to keep it moving. He got Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all those men that was down in a place called paradise. And it brought them out. The captivity led captivity out. And now he come up with all power in his hands. And says, now everybody that believe in me can be saved. If there's somebody in this room has never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're not sure whether or not you'll go to heaven or not, you can be sure today. Just as sure as I'm standing on this stage, you can be saved. I want everybody standing on your feet. If Jesus kept it moving in the face of opposition, I don't care what you're going through, he'll give you strength also to keep it moving with the opposition that you're going to face in your life. If I have somebody here that you're not, you're not sure whether or not I know the Lord or not, you can know him today. I wouldn't, be, I, wouldn't be, I wouldn't think about whether or not somebody think that I should have been saved. I would rather be embarrassed on this side than to die. I did a funeral yesterday of a young lady yesterday died, and we had four people at a funeral gave their life to the Lord. At a funeral. Because they came to the place to know that it could be them, and it could be you as well. So if you're here today, never trusted Christ. I want you to come. Nobody moving yet. Nobody but ushers in our security. Pastor, I'm saved and know I'm saved, and I, I believe God is leading me to join this ministry. Can, can I come? Yeah, you can come too. Pastor, I don't need that. I just need to pray for me because, you know, Pastor, you were talking a few minutes ago about, you know, the mess of situation, the mess of people, and I almost did some stuff. I thank you for preaching that today because that's for me. And good thing I came to church today because tomorrow y'all probably read about me in the newspaper. Well, if that's you, whatever the reason are, I want you to start coming right now. Would you start coming right now? Whatever the reason are, I want you to come on your own. I'm not going to beg you. I want you to come on your own. But I do beseech you by the mercy of God that you present your body, not a dead sacrifice, but a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. That's your reasonable service. Hallelujah. Deacon Fallen is, is, is standing. Deacon Fallen, here you go. If there is, there you go, Deacon, here you go. If there's, if there's somebody here who has never, never, never recalled the time when you said, you know, if I died, I'm not sure whether I'm going to heaven or not. You can be sure today, no lightning going to strike and no thunder is going to roll. It's just simple faith in Jesus. If that's you, could I, could, I, could I see your hands? You're not sure. You can be sure today. Anybody here that don't know the Lord? Okay, Pastor, I know the Lord, and God is leading me to join the church. I want to be a part of this church. Are you here? Are you here? Are you here? Yes. Amen. We got a lady here. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. What, what's your name, honey? Lydia Clark. Saved and know you're saved. Yes. Lydia, you know you've been coming here for quite a while. Yes. Seven years. Seven years? Yes. You was really checking us out, weren't you? <laughs> now I do tell people don't come the first time, but seven years. <laughs> but you know, really, I appreciate you, baby. We had already claimed you as our own. And we thank God that seven years is uh, is a number of completion. Amen. And we're so glad to have you as a part of us now officially that everything, every prayer that goes up in this ministry, honey, right now you're included in that prayer. Whatever God do for Antioch, he's doing it for you. Amen. So that's it. Ladies, would y'all give her a big hug? Would y'all welcome her? Come on. Come on, Antioch. Come on, come on. Let her, let her know that we're glad she's here. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there, is, there, is there somebody else? Somebody else? Did somebody else come to? Y'all y'all come. Come up. Come up here so I can see you. Amen. Come on. <laughs> yeah. What's, what's, your, what's your name, honey? What's your name? Valerie. V 
Valerie, saved and know you're saved, Valerie. Amen. Valerie, I know I tell everybody come to this church that you're not here by luck and by chance. There was something that we needed. You and I have a gift, and we work those gifts in a collaborative effort. Boy, we can make a difference, and I'm glad to have you as a member of our church. Listen, I did. I spoke to you. Praise the Lord. Listen. Amen. Listen. Ladies, would y'all would y'all give Valerie a big old Antioch hug? Come on. Come on. Come on. Hug her, y'all. Come on. Let her, let her be glad to have her. The Bible says he set us in families. Come on. Give her a hug. Come on, y'all. Give her a hug. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Why y'all stop clapping? So this, this is good stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is there any is there anybody else? Huh? You want to rededicate your life? Hallelujah. Amen. What's, what's your name, baby? Hmm? T C. T C. Does anybody else want to do this while we're here? She wanna she's saying, I'm already saved. I'm already a member of Antioch. I just want to rededicate myself to the Lord. Anybody else want to do that now so we can pray with you here? You know you done kind of got outside. You done kind of wandered off the way. But you just want to get, every now and then you have to just do that over. Amen. Anybody else want to come? Or, amen. We got somebody else. Anybody else want to come? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on up here. Come on. Come on. Anybody else want to? You coming too, honey? You coming? Come on. Come on up here. Anybody else coming to rededicate yourself? Come up here, baby. Come on. Come on. Anybody else up here? Amen. I just, and I'm just, I'm just going to pray. You already know the Lord, already saved. And sometimes we get off sometimes, but the Lord loved you. He ain't mad with you. In fact, he knew you were coming today. So I want to pray with you right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for these that have come. And God, and they love you, God. And, and sometimes, God, we get sidetracked. But God, in Jesus' name, I pray for them and I lift them up in Jesus' name. And everything that God, that you have already, God, sanctioned, ordained for them, they never lost it. And God, in fact, God, you never left. But God, they got away. But Lord, here they are now. And if you received the prodigal who had spent all, and he lived in righteous living, if you received him, I know that God, that you received them back too. They have never, Lord, lost your salvation. They just lost fellowship for a little while. But God, here they are now in the name of Jesus. I'm asking God that you would engulf them, God, with a spirit of acceptance to let them know that, God, you love them. And God, and today we're going to give you a praise offering for these people because, God, they rejoice over that son. We rejoice over them. In Jesus. Look, would y'all come and welcome them back in? Come on, come on. Would y'all hug these girls? I got a young man right here. Where my men at? Where my men? Where my men? Where my men at? Come on. This young man coming back to rededicate his life to the Lord. Amen. We got a young lady here, Hugger. We got a young lady here. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, all right. Would y'all go back? Would y'all, would y'all, where my counselors, where my counselors are? My counselors, all the counselors, y'all take them back in the back. And for the rest of y'all, we love you, God. Pray and we thank God for you. We love all of you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>